investment appraisal. This happens to be an integral part of accounting and finance section 5 and people who've been going through the past papers must be knowing that there are quite a few questions that demand that an investment appraisal needs to be carried out. You know, we are all familiar with questions, you know, referring to paper three, the case study, and now I believe paper four also. You know, in those questions, they want us to recommend to the directors whether they should, you know, go with option A, go with option B, or they should adopt strategy one, strategy two. So in, in many of these questions, um, that most of these questions, you know, an investment appraisal needs to be conducted, which will uh, give us an idea about the, the, the option that the, the investor or the business should go with. That seems to be a better option in terms of the expected profit sometimes, uh, you know, um, sometimes, um, you know, taking into account the expected payback period. Then of course, um, sometimes um, we are advised to uh, calculate the net present value and, uh, you know, give importance to the, the, the fluctuation, the expected fluctuation in the, you know, in the, in, in the exchange rates and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, investment appraisal is certainly um, one of the most important topics, I would say, especially with reference to uh, Section 5 and uh, P3, and, and like I said, P4, the case studies. Okay, so the word investment, it is simply an amount that is spent in anticipation of a return in future. Amount spent in anticipation of a return in future that, you know, that would yield a return in the future, that's your investment. An investment appraisal would be a combination of multiple techniques that we'll be discussing in this session. Combination of multiple techniques that are, you know, techniques that are used for the objective of assessing or appraising or, you know, um, analyzing various investment proposals and then hopefully selecting the most appropriate or the most suitable one, right? So, uh, Primarily, you know, there are, you can say there are three major techniques that, that come into effect or that prove to be quite effective when it comes to, to investment appraisal. The first one would be the payback method. The payback method, uh, a comparatively simpler technique, perhaps the, the simplest to use, the quickest to apply. Uh, payback method or, you know, payback period, payback period would be the time period required by an investor to recover his investment. The time period required by an investor to recover his investment or you know, to, to recover his uh, uh, capital cost, uh, that is uh, the, payback, the payback period. And you know, uh, obviously, the sooner he recovers the cost, the earlier he recovers the, the initial investment, the sooner he'll be in a position to start generating profit. So that is why, you know, it should not be difficult for us to, to, to understand the fact that the shorter the payback period, the better it is for a business. Because the sooner you recover the investment, the earlier you will start making profit. Because you start making profit, obviously, beyond the payback point. Right? And, um, you know, when you're attempting a question on payback, and uh, there are various options available, for instance, you will... Uh, Apply that simple formula. I mean, you know, the net cash flow is given, um, you know, in terms of uh, various quarters or years usually. And um, all you need to do is calculate the number of years orally. You don't need to apply a formula for that. So you get the number of years required for recovering the capital cost which is mentioned there. Years can be calculated orally. But as far as the months are concerned, a simple formula, amount required over net cash flow of the year into 12, that, that, that would do. By applying this simple formula, you can calculate the months also, years orally and months with the help of this formula that are needed by an investor to recover the capital cost. Very, very, this is the simplest of all investment appraisal techniques. And if there are multiple investment options given, you will calculate the payback period for all these options using this formula and the one with the shorter or the shortest payback period is, is the preferred option simple you know if there are three options and the payback period is one year two years and three years we can simply recommend to the directors 
that you know the, the first option is better because in this they're recovering the investment in a shorter period of time which means they will be able to start making profit earlier right very very simple technique to apply and as far as the significance or the advantage or advantages are concerned the payback i just mentioned you don't have to be a financial wizard in order to be you know to be in a position to apply this technique very simple technique to apply very quick and especially recommended in case of assets that face the risk of obsolescence assets in which there is a risk of obsolescence in case of such assets machinery etc the payback period um, payback period proves to be quite quite useful because you know in case of machinery for instance or such assets there's always a risk of obsolescence you know it becomes outdated so by applying the payback technique you are in a position to judge whether you have recovered the investment earlier or the asset will go obsolete before you you've done that right perhaps the the you know the most serious limitation that is associated with the payback method is that this technique you know it gives too much importance to one factor only and that is the time factor you know what is the decisive factor time there are the three projects xyz and you know we we we, we go with y because in y the payback period is the shortest or it is the quickest it is a very important factor no doubt about it but it can't be the only factor time factor is important but it can't be the only factor that is the limitation because in payback they just give importance to the time factor and they simply ignore the fluctuation in the net cash flow beyond the payback point so in in, in a way i think it is safe to state that the payback method you know the the, the drawback associated with this method is that you know it is based on incomplete information right that's number one then we can always use arr average rate of return for appraising various investment proposals arr is always an option average rate of return and you know um, if you need to define the term this is you know this is an investment appraisal technique that allows investors to calculate profit to calculate return as a percentage of investment calculating return as a proportion of investment right and uh, evidently i mean it's, it's it's easy for us to 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 observe that payback is a time based technique and arr is a profit based technique so that is why payback shorter the better arr higher the better that is that that's the main difference between these two investment appraisal uh, techniques and for your information arr average rate of return is also termed as return on capital employed this is also called roce return on capital employed it's like exactly the same it's a part of ratio analysis also and uh, the formula obviously arr is net return per annum over capital cost in 200 net return per annum over capital cost in 200 another simple formula by applying this technique we can we will be in a position to calculate the roce or the arr always in in, in a in percentage right because you know the, the the net cash flow is given you can just calculate the revenue by adding up the figures right and if subtract the capital cost and divide it by the number of years to calculate net return per annum and you know if there's two projects and the arr is 5% and 6.5% that 6.5% is a is a better option though i mean you, there's something important that you, you need to remember if some comparative analysis is some comparative data is available then the comparison will be between the answers yeah between the options for example in arr option 1 is 5% option 2 is 7% 7% is better however if there's no comparative data available and there is only one project under consideration then try to keep 25% in mind because you have to comment on the the feasibility of a project and when there's no comparison available so i mean it will be to be on the on the, on the safe side if the the promise returns a 25% or more so that that should be taken as a favorable result and similarly for payback if comparative data is not available then we have to we have to ensure that the payback period is less than 50% of the useful life of the asset right if there is a single project you know under discussion less than 50% of the useful life of the asset but obviously if comparative data is available 
for different projects, then you can simply compare the figures. In case of payback, shorter the better. In case of ARR, higher the better. ARR is a very useful technique if you have to, you know, uh, give an advantage. And especially, you know, uh, with, 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 reference to, with reference to payback, ARR might lead to more accurate results. Why? Because it gives importance to the entire useful life of the asset. It gives importance to the entire useful life of the asset, uh, you know, unlike, unlike what we discussed in the payback method. In payback method, you know, the drawback was it focuses on the time factor only. But in, in ARR, it, it relies, it gives importance to the entire useful life of the asset in case of average rate of return, right? Unlike the payback method. So basically, the drawback that we identified with, with payback, ARR gives us a solution to that. But the drawback, you know, the limitation in case of ARR is that it is based on the incorrect assumption, incorrect assumption that the value of currency remains unchanged over time. This is an incorrect assumption in case of ARR, that the value of currency, it remains unchanged over time. It remains constant. Whatever the value of currency is in year one, it is the same as the value of currency in year five, for instance. Obviously, this assumption is not based on facts because as we all know, the value of currency, it uh, obviously it fluctuates, it varies from year to year. So that's another drawback. And interestingly enough, the next technique, which is NPV, net present value, it will provide us with a solution to this problem. It's, it's like an evolutionary process. The problem that we identified with payback, ARR provides us with a solution to that. And uh, the problem that we've identified here with, with ARR, the next technique, net present value, will provide us with a solution to that. Okay, so net present value, the last technique to be discussed, you know, present value basically is the current value of an amount that is payable sometime in the future. Present value, that's the current value of an amount that's payable sometime in the, in the future. So, you know, as, as we know, the currency, the value of currency changes with time. NPV, this particular investment appraisal techniques, gives due importance to it. And it, that is why it is more useful in case of long-term projects because, you know, it, um, it takes into account that with the passive time, the value of currency will, will change, right? I'll just quote a simple example. For instance, there's a seller and there's a buyer and they're trying to negotiate a deal. The seller, let's suppose, demands, you know, 100 rupees for his product. The buyer says, you know, I'm, I'm okay with this. I'm not going to negotiate. I will give you 100 but I will make the payment next year. So obviously the seller must think twice before he finalizes the deal because 100 years, I mean 100 rupees, 100 dollars of today, obviously the worth of that amount won't be the same as you know, 100 rupees or 100 dollars in you know, uh, 2023 for instance because the value of currency is going to fluctuate. So, so keeping, keeping this, uh, you know, this particular factor in mind net present value can can prove to be you know quite effective in in appraising investment proposals by giving long term investment proposals by giving due importance to the expected variation in the value of currency for long term projects it is advisable in pv so you know uh, usually when you calculate the net present value the calculations are not that complicated you know you have to remember the formula obviously a net present value you know, it's net book value minus capital cost. Net book value minus capital cost, and how do we calculate the book value? Book value simply is a discount factor into net cash flow. Discount factor into net cash flow. You, you all have, have the written material in this regard. So, you know, the information is always provided. Discount factors are there. Discount factor, by the way, is the rate at which the currency is expected to lose value. The, the rate at which the currency is expected to depreciate. That's your uh, discount factor. So the formula for, for uh, book value is, book value is also called discounted cash flow, is net cash flow into discount factor. You will calculate the book values, you will add those up, that'll be your net book value. And of course, net book value minus the capital cost, capital outlay, that gives you the net present value. Net present value, just like ARR, should be as high as possible. There's no need to specif specify a figure though, but it should never be negative. It should never be negative because you know, if it is negative, that means the currency is losing value 
way too fast. And obviously, a dollar sign, it has to be there with the answer. So net present value, I've already explained, you know, the, the significance of this concept, that for long-term projects, it leads to quite accurate results because it takes into consideration the fluctuation of the value of currency, unlike ARR. That was the drawback associated with ARR. But, you know, the limitation, calculating discount factors accurately might not be easy because, you know, the, the, the exchange rates, they are, they are influenced by so many different factors which are unpredictable and they are beyond the control of a business. So accurate calculation of the discount factors might not be easy. And, and, and another limitation, it also assumes the technique that the currency is losing value. It revolves around depreciation. And of course, we know that there could be an appreciation in the value of currency also. That's like a limitation. But by applying these three techniques, due to the inv investors, they are in a good position to assess various investment proposals. And accordingly, uh, hopefully they can make the right choice or a choice which is less risky in terms of investment. Right? So this is an important topic to be, you know, to be, to, to be, to be covered and you must have a firm grip over it, especially with reference to the case studies and try to learn the formulas also. All right? Allah Hafiz.